the 90s. Windsurfing's golden era. TV, money, fame. Oh, and this guy. 12 years of pure domination came from many things. But the favorite one for his competitors to point at was the gear. During the custom days, the equipment war would never stop. And at the forefront of it all was the ever-changing board design. If you didn't have a proper board, don't even bother showing up to the contest. What seemed unbeatable could be totally obsolete six months later. And then the tobacco and alcohol sponsors were banned, the money got smaller, the World Cup slalom tour even disappeared for some time, and racing became this. Kinda cool. And this. Not so much. And when slalom finally returned in 2005, the boards looked a lot different. But what if I took a board from this era and put it on the modern race course? Hey, it's Maciej Krutkowski, and this is my life. To test the 90s board on the modern race course, we needed two things. One, the race course, which just happened to be there during a national event with a really strong fleet, national champions, ex-PWA competitors, 25 knots of wind, choppy, basically the perfect playground. And two, we needed the board. So here we have my personal favorite the 2020 FMX Racing Invictus Slalom 98 and here the Mistral SLE 78 which is actually 95 liters it's 278 long the guy that sold it to me claims it's 96 I'm pretty sure it's 99 uh, Diony wrote me the other day that he raised that board in 99 so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's that and I think the main difference is pretty self-explanatory I mean look at these two this one's 278 long by 55 wide and this one is 235 by 63 so total polar opposites in outline this one actually looks a lot bigger somehow but as I said they're the same size next difference visible to the eye no pads on this one I'm not sure if they weren't around or it was just a feel thing that they wanted to feel more connected and feel the chop etc doesn't look very comfortable we see how it how it's going to be in practice um, the stance is actually 4 cm uh, narrower which i think it comes from having to create more lift off of a smaller tail which leads us to the next um, big difference no cutouts and here we have these big two-step cutouts with adjustable plates um, so what this does is you're actually using this planing area but you're standing on a much wider deck pushing against the fin and creating a lot more lift the bottom shapes are also super different but we're not gonna bore you with that let's just take these two babies out to the water and see how they do there i have no idea where to put the the base plate let's see how this goes Okay, so, and 
and actually the modern fin fits really well on the board and also the sail so I thought it's gonna be like terrible it's actually okay okay so after doing a few more jibes I have to say it's not exactly as easy as a modern one it's actually pretty freaking tough the nose gets in the way a lot like you hit chops and like if you manage to set the rail properly it jibes okay if you have like a bad chop a little wiggle whatever it's terrible and then out of the jibe like you're missing tail to accelerate it doesn't want to accelerate so actually probably straight line is, is probably its best its best attribute but um, maybe on the race you know it, it will feel completely different so let's see how it does on the on the course I'm gonna do one race with my normal board and then switch to this one to have a good uh, good head-to-head -head feeling <laughs> let's go board the winds picking up so let's take the SLE the 1996 old school Mistral Salon board In the frames, hey, keep high movement, I'm getting to the bag. But the amount of work requires not a price you wanna pay. Tell me what I can't have a cop to. I ain't doing dirt that I ain't down to cop to. Living well, I've been selling the things I brought through. And if y'all don't know the name, then believe me that you about to. Finally, <laughs> before I crashed, then I was cutting through the park, and now. I managed to just stay on the board and top speed and straight line is okay. It's struggling a little bit out of the jibes to accelerate, but I managed to win it. So um, that was a cool feeling. I mean, I'm really stoked. It was a hell of a challenge, actually. Pretty surreal how you can probably not on a PWA level, but you can still be more or less competitive. So it's fun. It's definitely fun. For sure, the modern fin and the modern Everything. 
everything from the 90s, you know? <laughs> so Maciek, what's the verdict? <laughs> it's a good question, I mean, the verdict is that for the past 25 years the guys have been doing a good job developing boards and making them way easier, accelerate better, plane better, just the overall package. This one is still relatively fast, but everything else is hard, it's just difficult. I mean, if you have to buy a board, you buy this FMX Invictus and you just jump on it like after coming back from you know from from this board which didn't seem so bad to to the new one to the fmx it just felt like a dream like a new world you know like uh, so easy everything you don't think about nothing you just jibe and you can think about racing you don't need to think about the actual jibe so that's the main difference and yeah so i take this one any day but it was fun, it was fun and I get to really appreciate how how the generation before us, how the Bjorns and the Anderses, how they raced on it and, and put on a show and grew the sport to, to what it is now, so I guess thanks. <laughs>